Welcome to Belmont Journal Health Update. I'm joined today by Dr. Adrian Allen of the Belmont Board of Health. We're going to do some updates on hot news from the Board of Health and maybe some preventative measures you can be thinking about with the weather we're enjoying or not enjoying the month of February. Welcome, Dr. Allen. Thank Let's you. start right off with something kind of fun, marijuana. Uh, the Board of Health has uh, changed their regulations about marijuana. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how that's going to impact people in Belmont? We recently, last Friday, updated the Belmont regulations to more align with the state regulations for marijuana. In particular, what does that mean? Um, it means that we lowered the age of entry into a marijuana establishment from age 25 to 21 to align with the state regulations and have stricken the line about delivery um, as the state allows delivery. Initially when the board, and I was not on the board when this happened, but when the board created the regulations, marijuana was newly legalized. We, the state had very few guidelines on how to regulate and, and those were put in um, to safeguard. Um, since then, years have passed. Um, there are more guidelines or other towns that follow these guidelines. So to avoid confusion um, and to more align with the state, we aligned our regs with the state. Let's follow up a little bit on marijuana and the regulations. So the Board of Health is trying to align better with the state by lowering the age from 25 to 21 um, and allowing home delivery. Can you speak a little more, however, about marijuana as a health professional? What should we be thinking about? I think thinking on marijuana has really evolved. Um, it is the third most widely use uh, psychedelic chemical. So alcohol being number one, tobacco being number two, and marijuana being number three worldwide. Despite that, um, marijuana use disorder, and, and there is a definition of that we don't need to get into, but marijuana use disorder is not very common. Um, and of all the substance use disorders, marijuana use disorder um, is one of the least amounts. So uh, a couple of things though to think about. Um, smoke in any form is generally dangerous to your lung and cardiovascular system. So if there's an adult who wants to partake, smoking um, is harmful to the body. So there are other ways to ingest it. It is psychoactive. So you don't wanna drive or make decisions or do things. Um, in the long term, there are memory effects for people. Um, so it can affect cognitive function, obviously both while you're using, but in the long term. And, and with the legalization, particularly with younger folks in their 20s, we often see this hyperemesis syndrome where people may take too much and you get to this um, uncontrollably vomiting situation. In some ways it's safer than alcohol. Like you can um, put yourself into liver failure if you drink too much. Um, in marijuana, you don't have the same kind of overdose, it's similar to you start vomiting, but you don't have the same kind of overdose situation. But where we also get into risks and we encourage folks to take care of their mental health is if you're using it to treat other things um, without a medical license, without the guidance of a healthcare professional, we, we'd say like often people use it if they're anxious or depressed to really seek out that mental health care to make, create a robust health system and not to mask something else. And certainly in younger developing minds, um, it can have more cognitive effects in the long term and, and set you up. So. So, you know, we have freedom of choice for adults. I think in a responsible use, you can create safeguards. It's safer than some other substances that are legal, namely alcohol and tobacco. But there are some risks you need to be aware of. All right, that's good. That's good for us to remember. Particularly, I've noticed recently in the media, we're starting to see more advertising about marijuana in various forms or CBD yeah. in various forms. And it's, it's presented as something really helpful and uplifting, and this is going to make you work better. But got to be very aware of the downside of that. So thank you for, for explaining that to us. Um, moving into a slightly different topic, um, we're into February, and we know that in winter in general, uh, we get some cold snaps, some extreme cold snaps, and we haven't had a lot of cold this winter. We've been very lucky, and so people might be caught a little off guard. Can you speak a little bit about 
being aware and being careful about things like frostbite or hypothermia? Certainly, and the health department just posted on Facebook a great link for folks to take a look at, to look at temperatures and wind chills and how to protect yourself. On days like today, where we're talking about wind chill factors in the minus 20, 30 range, frostbite can occur within 10 minutes of being outside. So it's important for yourself and for pets um, to be covering up those areas of your faces um, and body that you particularly don't, like a face mask, making sure the tip of your nose or tips of your ears, those are common areas that can get frostbite. So you just wanna make sure you cover those when you're out. Um, dressing in layers, um, wool and silk are particularly good. Um, insulators, tight layers, not big baggy, tight things keeping your heat close to your body. Um, and to be aware of some signs of hypothermia, um, hypothermia, you get a little bit of slow lethargic speech, um, you're a bit confused. If you take somebody's um, temperature and they're having those symptoms and their body temperature is less than 95 degrees, that would be an emergency room visit. Um, to warm up after cold, you wanna warm the trunk first. So, you know, drinking warm non-alcoholic beverages to get the blood to the center of the body um, and to like really wrap the trunk in warm clothes. Mm -hmm. The other thing to know for extremities, if you're frostbite or peri-frostbite, don't put your hands in warm water or hot water. I wow. should, shouldn't say warm, hot. You wanna put it in lukewarm water um, because if you go from frigid to hot, your arteries aren't going to open up and that might make you feel worse. So you just wanna gradually warm those extremities if you have like a toe or fingers that are numb. You don't wanna just dip them into really 120 degrees water and that'll, that'll make it not good. All right, that's very helpful because your inclination would be to quickly put those extremities into some hot water. All right, good to know. You gotta be a little careful with that. One other thing I just want to note about, you know, heat, and if you're having trouble with heat, to contact the utilities if people have trouble paying, and, and to try, not, certainly never to put an, a gas oven on to heat uh, the house, or even a kerosene base heater, those things really is have, can, can have carbon monoxide poisoning, so just be cautious with anything that's burning anything. That's a good reminder. Thank you. I've also noticed that uh, some of the plumbers and the, and the heating people have been sending out messages and emails about be alert, be careful, call us right away if you have that's a problem. Right. That's so right. that's good to know. People should pay attention. I know I made sure the water level in my furnace was up last night right. before I went to bed. <laughs> right. Uh, one more topic. Uh, again, February, we come up on midwinter vacations, February school vacations. People go skiing, they go up north, or they also go to warm climates and beaches. Uh, what should we remember about safely being outside in the sun? We know in the summer, but we sometimes forget in February. Right, and your skin is not used to it, and you're you know, transitioning from being covered to being exposed to the sun. Certainly wearing a mineral-based sunblock um, that contains titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Um, those are very good barrier sunscreen. And it's not like back in the day where you'd have like a, um, a lifeguard with a white stripe on their nose. Many of these actually do rub in, but the titanium dioxide and the zinc oxide really are effective at blocking out the dangerous rays. Um, you wanna make sure it's blocking both UVA and UVB and you can look online for some guides. They evaluate consumer reports, environmental working group. These organizations evaluate the blocks to make sure you're getting both rays. Consider a really wide brim hat because the back of your neck and your face um, get, can get some sun and, and certainly rash guards or other type of UVA, U, UVB protective clothing can really be helpful. Sunblock is good, but it's not 100%. Um, the clothing can help and to reapply after two hours or after being in the water. Those are important things. The other thing to note is you might get some heat related rashes. So you might want to slowly acclimate, you know, you're in the cold, now you're in really hot, humid places, your, your skin may have some trouble adjusting. So you might need to go in or take a dip. You can get some heat rashes from that. All right, good, good things to, to remember. Thank you. Uh, before we wrap up, how about a quick COVID update? What do we need to know? I think we're doing well this year. Um, COVID, we are in the medium. We had briefly gone into high in January for just one week and we're in the medium range, which is really great. 
For flu, we're actually down to low, which is a huge change from the last month. So that is wonderful news. So I'm feeling optimistic for the first time in a while. So still, still certainly if you are high risk, take your precautions, but it's a really good news story. All right, excellent. Giving us some hope going forward. Yeah. Excellent. All right, thank you very much. Great to talk with you again. Uh, we'll see you the next time. I'm Anne-Marie Mahoney with Dr. Adrian Allen, and this has been Health Update.